Okay, so after looking at the syllabus, uh, today's goal is to start to look at LinkedIn. Uh, go ahead and open up your web browser. And I'll show you an example. You've probably already seen these, but I'll show you an example of a LinkedIn profile. So let's check out linkedin.com slash Victor Campos. Oh, sorry, it's linkedin.com slash in and then Victor Campos. I always forget about that. LinkedIn.com slash in slash Victor Campos. So LinkedIn is like every other social network in that it has a profile, it has uh, content that can be shared, it has likes and responses and all of that, just like every other social network. But the big idea with LinkedIn is that it's supposed to be the professional social network. It's not really to log in there and chat with friends and family and share funny cat pictures and all of that. Although you could use it for that, provided it's useful to your connections. So, <clears throat> Like most networks, also the default is that you you get a you get kind of a gibberish name on the address until you claim your name. So I was fortunate enough to claim my name here, just short first and last name, uh, early enough in LinkedIn before it got really really popular, and then I would have to settle for something else. So like that's the problem all the time with these networks. You want a certain name and unless you jump on that quickly you'll probably not be able to get it and you'll have to settle for something else. Putting in your middle initial or something. Let's make some notes here. Again these notes will be in the network folder. LinkedIn, the professional social network. all of the features of the other fun social networks, the other uh, personal social networks. It has uh, sharing and commenting, etc. Following. It has a personal side and a business side kind of redundant because the whole thing's already a business type of network but what I mean is you can create an account focused on the person Victor Campos or you can create uh, a listing for Victor Campos's business so it does have both just like pretty much all the other networks and similar to Facebook and the others you need the personal one before you can create the the business one yes I don't think so. Just delete the address and type it again. It happened on mine as well. Uh, I just typed it again, short like that, linkedin.com. Okay. And if it doesn't do it, don't worry about it, but uh, we will get to that in a moment. All right. So LinkedIn, because it is the uh, professional social network, one advice that I would say first of all, use LinkedIn selfishly. selfishly not selflessly <laughs> selfishly use LinkedIn selfishly how does a connection benefit you all these other networks we sort of feel like we want to build as many followers as possible. There is an ego boost to say to seeing I now have 107 Twitter followers and when I started I had you know, 50 or less. And it feels good that we think people want to pay attention to us so they're gonna like our page on Facebook or they're going to follow us, subscribe to us on, on uh, YouTube or whatever. Those numbers do have a value the more uh, followers you have on most networks 
the better because it does then give you more possibility of a result. If I've only got 10 followers, uh, maybe I'm only going to get one result, meaning one sale. If I've got 50 or 100 or 1,000 followers, I have more possibility of the small amount of real active people to care. LinkedIn's a little different. So just to put this back in the notes, I think I mentioned this previously, but we can say 1% um, of your followers are your real followers. What I mean by that, they are the ones to actually do something meaningful. Doing something meaningful for my business, Victor's Bakery, means buying my cupcakes, buying the cookies, buying my things. That's, you know, when you really boil it down to it, if we're in this for a business or anything similar to that, well, we hopefully want to make some money. Uh, off of our business, or maybe I've got a nonprofit and I need volunteers, or maybe I want to show off my art, there is going to be some result you want. And I keep saying business and product over and over, but this applies to everything that you're trying to do, uh, monetary or not. But just to keep it simple, so my real followers of my business are the ones that are actually going to buy something. It's nice that I've got 10,000 followers. It's nice that I suddenly built myself up to 33 followers. But uh, let's say I've got 100 followers. What's 1% 1 of 100? One. One real follower out of 100? That sounds very... It sounds so low, but it is true. It is very easy to click like and very easy to click follow. But suddenly it's very difficult to click the mouse buy or subscribe or something else that's meaningful. Uh, it's so easy to... To, to do that aspect, but so hard to do the, the most important aspect. So if we think with this very conservative number, and maybe you're a superstar, and maybe you're closer to 10%, or 50%, let's say your, your content is amazing, and in, in 50%, you, you have 50% success rate. That still means if I've got 100 followers, 50 are the ones that are paying most attention are, and are going to buy. If I've got 20 followers, 50%, that's 10. 10 sales, is that enough? So thinking in worst case scenario about 1% being the real ones, the ones that will follow through, out of 100, that's 1. Out of 10 followers, that's a fraction of a fraction of 1, just rounding it up to 1. So the more followers that you get, the better on most networks. Except LinkedIn. This is the one again about being selfish. You could accept the connection from everyone that asks to connect with you. And I know that when I go home, in my inbox, I'm going to have like 18 requests mm -hmm. to connect with me. But I do use LinkedIn selfishly, meaning how does the connection benefit you? I'm not trying to simply build 500 followers or 200 or 100 or 7,000. I'm not trying to just get a big set of numbers here. I think it shows here I have less than 100 connections. Because I want to connect with those that are most valuable to me. How is it going to help me? How will my uh, needs be furthered by connecting with you? And I hope people don't take it in a bad way, but I usually don't connect with students uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is if we were in a class where the class is a graded class, well that could be a conflict of interest that we're friends online, and then they take it as in, why did I get that C in the class if we're buddies online? So I don't friend people or connect with people, students, especially if it's a graded class. And secondly, uh, I wouldn't uh, connect also with students uh, for the reason here. Uh, again, no offense, but why? what does it benefit me to connect with you if you, if you are uh, you know, a babysitter or a lawyer, I don't need a lawyer, or, you know, what is your profession or what do you do or what what do you offer me? And yes, it's selfish, and I'm saying yes. It, in this network, yes, it matters. Yeah, you're limiting my selfishness. What's that? You're limiting my selfishness. <laughs> your selfishness? Because you connect with you, it's good for me. Yes, <laughs> well, it's uh, either or. So... That is something that I do. Oh, okay, I have 101. That is something that I do, but obviously you can use it 
how you wish, um, but I have 101 connections in my case um, who I've connected with uh, are to my benefit as much as possible. So think in terms of using LinkedIn that way. The numbers might not matter. The number of connections, followers, might not matter. Quality over quantity. I would, I would rather have seven connections with people that might benefit me professionally than 70 or 700, even though I said the 1% are really going to uh, do what you really want them to do. Um, this one, I think, is the special case. Connect with people that are going to be most valuable to you and that are not detrimental to you. Because like the other networks, whenever you connect to anyone, you're going to see their content. You've chosen to follow an account, so when they post, they're going to see their you're going to see their stuff. This is an, ex this is an example of a LinkedIn account then. Uh, there's a picture, there's a name, there's a job description, job title that is, location, and then other things. Personal LinkedIn Profile checklist. A good photo. This is not the one where you're going to put a picture of your cat or your kids or a sunset. This is the one where you're going to do a photo of you. Uh, a good photo, quotes, is one where you felt comfortable in. I was just with, uh, with a client yesterday and we needed to get a photo of them for their website. And uh, she had the classic, oh, I can't take a photo, I feel too stiff, I, I, I don't feel good today, and my hair's flat, and all of that. So uh, if you don't feel it, then that you're, it's going to come out in your photo. Uh, but a good photo is uh, relaxed, professional attire. We have the keyword and the connotation of professional attire, which I think most of us would think professional attire is the suit and tie to go to the office. But technically, professional attire has to do with the attire of your profession. So if your profession is of a lawyer, you probably want the suit and tie. But if your profession is of a daycare center, you can wear your tie-dye t-shirt that you're going to wear at the business you are going to dress for the business, the, 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 the job description that you're in. So it wouldn't behoove you to have the suit and tie. You know, if you're running a surf shop in Imperial Beach, why is this person wearing a suit and tie? It, this, uh, they're not a real surfer. They're, they, you know, they just came from uh, the, the corporate headquarters. What do they know about surfing? So professional attire is the attire related to your profession, to your job. And if it is the flip-flops and, and uh, t-shirt and such, then it works for the business, for your clientele. A good photo is upper body, uh, also known uh, as a bust shot. You know, when they have those little busts, those little statues, those busts that go on the desk, and it's just up, shoulders up. <laughs> so, bust shot upper body, so shoulders and up or so. Uh, most of these networks, because they have a small icon for the uh, for, for that profile photo, it's really bad to do the full body shot, because that icon is going to shrink down really small and you're going to look like a little stick figure in the in the photo. So upper body, uh, you know, headshot sort of thing is going to be better body, not a full body shot. Good light. That does not mean flash. Uh, no matter how good your camera is, they still haven't quite mastered flash. When you turn on your flash and take a photo, even if you've got the double, uh, the double colored uh, LED lights that are supposed to uh, make you look nice, 
the problem with flash on a phone especially is that it's so direct. If you look at professional photographers that use flash, they often have the flash up on a little arm that's off to the side, high and off to the side. And I often see also professional photographers, they have their camera here in one hand and they're holding the flash separately like out here and they're taking the photo. That must tell you something. If the professional doesn't have the flash directly aimed at you, that must mean something. And what that means is that flash right on your phone, right at the person's face is terrible. It's going to cost weird cast weird shadows on their face most likely and because the light is so directly on them it's actually going to flatten their features and make them look weird. So I wouldn't use the flash on your phone. Uh, that flash that they've got off to the side is at, at an angle that creates contour to the face, makes it more pleasing. If you don't uh, have an off-camera flash we can use nature's flash which is simply some light source uh, off to an angle to get a photo. So I'm not getting very good direct light from this side of the room, but let's say there was the sun over here, and if I'm standing over here somewhere and the light is falling on me this way and I'm taking the photo this way, this is a good um, light source. So good light. Right photo. No flash. The rest of the checklist. Your name as you are commonly known. So I would uh, I would have the option of either using William Jefferson Clinton, aka Bill Clinton. So I would use the one that is most commonly known. You have the space to put in your whole name, middle name, your second last name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, unless you are commonly known about that name or that's on your business cards or that's how you're known, I wouldn't put your full, full, full name. Notice here I only have, um, you know, Victor Campos. So I don't have my middle initial and all of that. I, I don't need it. I don't, I don't really use it for anything, uh, business cards or, or, or professionally and such. Call it then vanity URL. The short name, or the short address of your LinkedIn profile. When you first start off, you have something like LinkedIn.com/slash I don't know users slash Victor dash Campos dash numbers, something like that by default. Uh, I'll show you that you have to take an extra step to then turn it into something more compact, like that. Professional, not so professional. You have it left as the default, which is hard to look at, hard to tell people, hard to put on a business card. Shorter one does fit on a business card and look better and, and all of that. But you have to activate it. And the last time that I checked this, when I taught this uh, a, a couple of months ago, they had moved it. It was in a certain place, and they, then they moved it somewhere else. And then the last checklist item, content, which is the biggest one. Because content includes whatever you think is relevant for people to see. Think in terms of a resume 2.0. Classic resume, resume 1.0, is paper. Right? The one, possibly two sheets that condense your job experience and all of that educational experience in one or two pages. Well, LinkedIn is a resume 2.0. It's got fields for you to fill in of education, job em uh, employment history, awards, references, uh, all of that stuff. So depending on what is important for your goals, you fill in your content. So 
fill in the content based on your goals. Let's say I'm starting off. I just got my degree as a as a web designer. I want to get into the world of making websites for businesses. So I need to fill in a resume that shows off as much as possible that I am a good and valuable and hireable web designer. So I would fill in my education, showing off the classes that I took in graphic design. I would uh, fill in the degrees that I hopefully earned uh, for taking those classes. Even better, I would show my portfolio of projects. This is one thing beyond the regular resume. Uh, there is a way for you to include projects that you've worked on. Depending on the industry, it will make sense for you or not. But again, web design. Everyone can be a web designer and everyone can claim to be a web designer. The real web designers are the ones that can show, here's what I've done. Here's the websites I've made. Here's the clients I've worked with. So, portfolio items. awards, there's even a spot, patents, and stuff like that, um, projects, employment history, all of that in order to reach your ultimate goal. And your ultimate goal is whatever you define it. I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying to sell something. Let's say in terms of a, of a realtor. Okay, I'm going to use LinkedIn as a realtor. So the big idea, the ultimate goal of me being a realtor is either to uh, sell someone's house or help someone buy a house. That's the big idea, I would say. I haven't taken any realty classes, but that's what I think is the big goal of being a realtor. Uh, selling or buying houses. So how would I use LinkedIn and what would I put in uh, to show my experience as a realtor? Hopefully if I have certification, I put that in there. My education, if it's relevant as a realtor, I put that in there. Uh, what firms I've worked at, employment history. Self-employed, of course, also counts. Uh, employment from others also counts. Uh, regarding realty and such, there's a way for you to show like your territory and such and your experience in a particular housing market. Because I'm trying to show people if they're interested in hiring me as their realtor to sell or buy their house, here's my experience, here's what I know, here's what I've done. You're seeing in my example there, then, uh, education, I have recommendations from people, education, and so forth. Uh, we'll talk about posts and activity in a moment. There's a summary. Probably need to update it to experience, where I worked at. And then you have to decide here, how public do you want it? It's going to be based on your goal of having LinkedIn. If I'm trying to get a job, uh, volunteers, interns, whatever, as opposed to uh, keeping my connections small. So I can have the whole profile totally public. Or totally private. <clears throat> or in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. You could show some things and not other things. Maybe you want to show your job experience, but not your education or vice versa. So you have to decide what's going to be most valuable. 
um, I have mine pretty completely public uh, since it's the professional network whatever I have listed there I'm fine for everyone to see and be able to find the other networks you know Facebook Instagram and such I probably have those private because I only want to connect with friends and family and that's the personal side of things but probably on your LinkedIn you want it as public as possible because this is one way to put your best foot forward if you if you have a public LinkedIn this could be the best example of the best of you. Uh, you've heard the term Google yourself. Have you Googled yourself? And that's just have you searched for yourself online? Have you searched to see what does the internet know about you? Well, things that are public could be found by the general internet. And therefore, embarrassing things that were public could be found uh, all over the internet. So if you have most of your accounts private, but you have this one as public, this could guide the results to the best results. Your profile here, where it shows your education and your job experience and all of the things that show you as a professional. This is known as reputation management. everything we do online could be used against us. It's best to seed the internet with our best face. Mixing way too many metaphors with your best face. It's reputation management. So if you've got the best content uh, about yourself out there, that's what will show up instead of the, the negative stuff or the private stuff. Related to that, this is a little off topic, but it's related. Make a note, and we'll look, we'll look at the site in a moment, for a moment. Brandyourself.com I think one that's also around is simply called reputation.com. Management site. Repu uh, repu not reputation. 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 Dot com. That uh, kind of is obvious, uh, perhaps by the name. It's about uh, having a good reputation. Uh, controlling your reputation online. Brand Yourself is very similar. I've used Brand Yourself for, for a while, for a few years. I think it's good. I haven't used reputation.com myself, but I do uh, hear their radio ads and, and hear them as a recommendation. But both of these are about that, to control your message about yourself online. If we look at that briefly, brandyourself.com, Your Google results directly impact your career. Have unwanted Google results? Our tools and services help you clean up, protect, and improve how you look online. Create a free account. So there is uh, the free aspect as well as a paid aspect. So if you see embarrassing or bad or negative stuff about you when people search online for you, that could be bad. Uh, by now, it sh we should know and accept that probably, if we're trying to get hired somewhere, our potential employer is probably checking us out online, probably checking to see what rocks can I turn over for this person. Uh, the legality uh, of it and all of that hasn't been figured out. Now with the ease of the internet that you can look people up uh, and you would have a very hard time proving that, you know, your embarrassing uh, tweet was the thing that cost you that potential job. So, if you have a site like this, 
where you can uh, control your message, you want to uh, take advantage of it. So the, this is one of them, and another one is reputation.com. They both have sort of the same idea. Turn customers into brand champions, boost star ratings, gain insights. This one's a little bit more, you know, working with, uh, with customers, but it's all about checking what has effectiveness, efficacy. And they both have uh, like free and paid versions. Well, LinkedIn is about that as well, to various degrees. And LinkedIn, like the other networks, has the free version and the paid version. We'll look at both. So in general, you can see that as an example of a LinkedIn profile. Uh, you then can see why it's uh, public or not. For example, here projects. If I'm saying that I have experience in, in web design and all of that, that's great, so does everyone. But if I can actually have active links that go to real clients, that is much more believable than simply writing down that I, yeah, I've worked with 20 clients. If you're able to click on those and it goes over to a real result, even better. So we're going to either log in or create an account, and then uh, we'll look at how it's valuable for a person, and then we'll look at it how it's valuable for a business. Then you can decide which of them is most important for you. How many of you already have a LinkedIn account? A few people? Good. If you don't, uh, you'll have to go through the process here of join now. So let's take a moment to either sign into the account or join now. If you have to join now, it will ask you for several things. Uh, you want to fill as much of that as you think is necessary. People often think when you complete these accounts and it asks you for your uh, high school and your favorite book and all of that, well, you don't have to put anything you don't want that isn't valuable to you. So I'm going to do a sign in. You can join now or sign in, and then we'll continue in just a moment. I just want to make sure that you're either able to sign in or sign up. Once we've confirmed that, uh, we'll take a break in a moment, but try to see if you can um, sign in or sign up. So hopefully, eventually, you get you get a, you get your profile. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll be there one moment. Um, so hopefully, you get this profile when you first set it up, the first time. There, there is. It does ask you for a lot of different things to fill in. So just complete it as best as possible as whatever you think is valuable to you, and we'll see how to use this. Where 
So a LinkedIn profile uh, has the personal aspect and then we have also the business aspect. It's kind of hidden. Um, we will see uh, how to get to it if you need it. So for example, uh, myself, uh, I have my personal LinkedIn here and I also uh, manage uh, the, the LinkedIn business listings of other people. So I'll show you where that is a little bit later. But LinkedIn is very similar to most of the networks in that you have these various uh, links at the top. We'll explore all of these in detail a little bit later. So as long as as long as you've been able to log in and you see I've got my icon view profile if you don't have an icon there, that's something you'll be able to edit a little later. But I just want to check for the moment that people have been able to either uh, sign in or sign up. If you see some screen here about LinkedIn, you're, you're fine for that moment. Uh, we'll take our first break and uh, confirm that we've got something to work with. And after the break, I'll talk about the different screens and the value of how to use uh, LinkedIn for your, for your business. So it's 10.37, we'll take a break until 10.47, and then we'll go on.